Welcome to a global perspective on investing, exploring effective diversification, the 2014 edition. In light of the pronounced stock market rally, many sideline investors are wondering, is it too late to get back into equities? We would suggest that it's never too late to move back to an asset allocation aligned with your investment goals and normal risk tolerance. We would also suggest it's never too late to consider the construction of your portfolio and how it could be more effectively diversified. Investors have a bad habit of trying to mess around with diversification, hurting into the best performing asset classes and fleeing the worst after the fact. In a fashion, we coined the folly of gaming diversification. The effectively diversified portfolio actively seeks to avoid such wealth-destroying behavior by taking prospective positions across a range of returns, risks, and correlations. We believe that effective diversification should be meaningfully global within equity and fixed income distributed broadly across asset classes and rebalanced on a periodic basis. Let's briefly explore the four principles of effective diversification. The first is global equity diversification. Global diversification boosts both minimum and expected returns, mitigates U.S. only risk, and helps control overall volatility. The U.S. accounts for only about 40% of the world's equity market capitalization, which means U.S. investors limiting themselves to domestic markets are neglecting about 60% of existing opportunities. Investing globally means expanded horizons and a richer set of investment opportunities. Global fixed income diversification is equally important. Similar to U.S. equities, U.S. bonds account for only about 50% of the world's outstanding fixed income obligations. Many commentators are warning investors off bonds these days given the potential for rising interest rates. Those that do so, however, miss the point of fixed income exposure, namely risk control and downside protection in uncertain environments. Furthermore, investors can shed some interest rate risk by extending to credit, currency, global bond, emerging debt, and high yield. The next principle is equal weighted portfolio construction. In our view, market cap weighting is the Achilles heel of index construction and a source of unreliable returns. Market cap weighting is a bet on price momentum and a big one at that. No matter how you slice and dice equity indexes by market cap, style, sector, or individual issues, equal weighting adds value over reasonably long time frames. The final principle is rebalancing which institutionalizes the classic investment discipline of buy low and sell high. Annually is a great time to rebalance a portfolio, but it can also be done more frequently. The point is to regularly trim the winners and buy the losers. Given 2013 performance, an appropriate rebalance now would involve trimming U.S. equities and buying emerging market stocks. Following these principles for building effectively diversified portfolios has proven to be, well, fairly effective. Looking at performance over the past 10 years using a typical 60% equity, 40% fixed income allocation, a few observations jump out. First, there is no lost decade here. The 60-40 portfolio generated a gross return over 8%, which is better than U.S. large-cap equity or 
fixed income only allocation and with nearly one third less risk than the equity market. Second, over the last 10 years, the S&P 500 delivered performance that it was among the worst equities had to offer. Meanwhile, emerging markets, the least followed index, had the best performance by far. And U.S. mid and small cap indexes also easily outpaced the S&P 500. Finally, bonds, the ultimate risk control assets, had strong positive returns over the period and are up close to double digits for the past five years. If all goes well, 2014 is set to be the sixth year of the current bull market. With an enormous amount of still sidelined cash waiting to get back in, questions remain about how to deploy these funds effectively. Keep this in mind. If you invest like everyone else, you likely will experience the same subpar returns that everyone else does. If you invest effectively, you give yourself a better chance of enhancing total returns while managing downside risk. I'm Doug Cote with a global perspective on investing.